Glossier is coming to Sephora, so let's talk about it. So since Glossier is coming to Sephora, that means the brand is going to be a lot more easily available to a lot more people. So I thought I'd take this time to just kind of go through the brand and all the products. I've tried a lot of products from the brand, but not everything. But just to talk about what I've tried, even maybe what I haven't, share my thoughts on everything. I have some of the products here that I can actually show you as well. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. So I'm just gonna go through the Sephora webpage this is supposed to be launching on the 23rd, which is probably the day that I'm posting this video. So probably by the time you're seeing this, all of these products should be available for order. The first thing that's coming up on my Glossier page on Sephora here is the Balm.com Lip Balm and Skin Salve. Now, this is something that I have tried, but they've reformulated it very recently, and so I haven't tried the new formulation of this. The previous formulation of the Balm.com I thought was really excellent. I still have a couple tubes of it. My favorite is the mint. I've only tried a couple of the flavors, but I have the mint and the original right now. And I just love it. I find it to be one of the best kind of lip mask type products. It's what I've been using as my overnight lip balm lately, and I find it to be really fantastic. I apply it before I go to sleep, and when I wake up in the morning, I can still feel it on my lips. So that to me is a sign of a really good overnight lip balm or lip mask. I also like to use it when I'm going out for a walk. So first thing in the morning, I usually take my dog Xander out for a long, about an hour long walk. And it's quite cold here. It's often, you know, pretty windy. And I find, again, that is one of the best products for that because it just lasts the whole time and makes my lips feel really protected and nourished. So unfortunately, they've reformulated it. So I have no idea what the new formula is going to be like. I would like to try it at some point, but I really can't see how it could possibly be an improvement on the original formula because that one just works so well for me. So that's really all I have to say about that one. As I haven't tried the new formula, I can't say too much about it. The next product that is coming up here is the Cloud Paint Gel Cream Blush. Now this is something that I've tried. I think I've tried a couple of the shades um, in samples. When you used to order from the Glossier website, you'd be able to get a few samples that you could choose that they would include. I don't think they do that anymore. The last time I ordered from Glossier, there was no option to add samples, which is really a shame because I find that to be the best way to try new products really is through samples Then you don't have to commit, but you still get the opportunity to try the formulas and colors. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think they have samples. Maybe on Sephora, they'll start to do some of their rewards or their you know, extra add-ons with purchase or even samples will be Glossier products, that would be fantastic. But back to the cloud paint. So I have tried it. My impression of it is that it's very highly pigmented. So a very, very tiny bit goes a long way. That can be good, but it also means you have to be a little bit more careful when you're applying it. But I do remember it being really easy to blend out and really easy to work with. You just have to be careful not to apply too much. And I think this is one of those products that's probably a really good bang for your buck. So this is $26 Canadian and it has 10 milliliters in it. And I think that's just going to last a very long time. I think it would be quite difficult to go through one of those. And they have a decent range of colors. I would love to see a muted, quite cool tone shade. They have a uh, Dusk, which is a brownish nude, which is quite muted, but it's on the warmer side. They have a nice kind of light pink. Um, that's a cooler tone, but again, it's a pink. It's not really a nude or a muted color. And then the shade Beam is a soft peach, which again, it's not that muted and it's on the warmer side. The rest of the colors are ones that I personally would probably stay away from just because I have very pale skin and the rest of them are quite bright uh, or dark, but they're beautiful colors as well. So they have Dawn, which is a sunny coral. Spark is a bright poppy red. I think I've tried Spark as a sample and it was really, really pigmented. Storm is a warm rose, but it looks to be quite deep. Um, then we have Haze, which is a deep fuchsia pink and Eve, which is a rich mulberry, which looks to be very deep as well. So a nice shade range, but I'd still like to see more options in that shade range. Um, but I think overall, this is quite a good product and uh, a good value for your money. 
The next thing I'm seeing here is the Glossier U perfume. So the conceit of this perfume is basically that uh, it smells like you or it's like a skin-like scent. I have gotten a couple samples of this and I personally really don't like this scent. Um, it's one of those ones that I sprayed and immediately threw it out because I knew it just didn't agree with me, but I'm really sensitive and really picky when it comes to different fragrances and probably 90% of the perfumes that I smell, that's the case. I spray them once and then I can't stand it, so I have to throw it out. So um, I'm not the best person to ask about that perfume, but that's my personal experience with it. Next up here is the Ultra Lip High Shine Lipstick with Hyaluronic Acid. This I haven't tried, so I really can't say anything about it. Uh, it's described as a high shine lipstick that has the rich moisture of a balm, sheen of a gloss, and buildable color of a lip tint in one step without having to layer multiple products. I like the sound of that. Again, I think they could really expand the shade range here. There are, again, a couple of kind of lighter, softer tones, but not a lot of muted tones. There's Villa, which is a dusty rose, which looks to be probably the most muted tone here. Then there are a few bright ones, a couple berries, and a couple of like quite dark kind of brownish shades. So I don't know anything about this formula. I haven't used it, but I do like the sound of it. To me, it sounds kind of maybe similar to something like the Lisa Eldridge luxuriously lucent lipsticks, even maybe like the Clinique almost lipsticks, I think that formula is called. Now, another thing that I would really like them to expand the shade range on is their perfecting skin tint for dewy sheer coverage. So this, I do have a bottle of their skin tint. There are 12 shades of this. Now that's a pretty bad number for a shade range, but this is incredibly, incredibly sheer so much that I find that it's not even really worth wearing this, in my opinion. There is not enough tint to make any kind of difference in the coverage on my skin. The color is not great, but as I said, it's it's so sheer that it hardly matters. This is the shade G12. G12 is the lightest shade in the range. And I will show you in a second a clip of me applying this to my face. I mixed it with my green color corrector because it's just so pinky peach and i was intending to wear that and the concealer throughout this video i'll talk a little bit more about the concealer in a minute but when i applied it this morning uh, i found there was a bit of a smell from it so i didn't really want to have it sitting on my face so i ended up washing off both the skin tint and the concealer in favor of a different foundation but i will be able to show you the demo of me applying the skin tint and the concealer but you can see i'm blending out the skin tint here and it's left a bit of a finish a bit of a dewy finish but i really can't see any pigment whatsoever from that so to me their skin tint is essentially useless because it doesn't add any discernible pigment to my eye I prefer something like the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer or the Ritual Defeat 3-Drop Foundation. Those are similar type products. They have similar kind of textures and tinted moisturizer feels, except that they actually provide coverage and pigment and are quite flattering in terms of their texture on the skin. I don't really find anything other than a slight sheen that comes from the Glossier, and even then the sheen dissipates quite quickly. You can see even on my hand, it's barely discernible anymore. So I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't hate it, but I just don't think there's really much point in this. The concealer, on the other hand, I do really like. So I have two shades of their concealer. Let me pull it up on the site here. It's called the Stretch Concealer for Dewy Buildable Coverage. And let me first talk about the things that I like about this. 
The texture is really nice and it's really easy to use, super blendable, and it gives a quite good amount of coverage while still looking really natural. Katie Jane Hughes is a makeup artist who loves and uses this product quite a lot, and she always describes it as a tinted moisturizer in a pot. And I think that's a good description, except that I find it has more coverage than you would probably expect from a tinted moisturizer. But the texture is really very soft, uh, and it does have a dewy finish. So if you were to compare this to something like the Monica Blunder Blunder Cover, which is in a similar potted component, this is just a much softer, kind of more readily spreadable product and it's much dewier as well. The Monica Blunder sits a lot harder in the pot and kind of has to be warmed up with the skin, whereas this one is already at a kind of melted consistency right to begin with. So I'm gonna swatch the two shades that I have. Uh, now I mentioned that I think mine have gone bad. I've had these for about three years, so they really don't owe me anything. I'm not that surprised to see that they've gone bad. So right there is the shade G11 and that's G12. So again, G12 is the lightest shade in this range. G11 is the next lightest. And I love the undertone of G11. If it were lighter, it would be a, a perfect product to me. My issue with this is again in the shade range, once again, only 12 shades and none of them is really appropriate for my skin when it's at its palest, which is most of the time. In the summertime, I can wear G11 and it's a pretty perfect shade with a fake tan. It has a nice kind of neutral undertone there. It's a little bit yellowy, which suits me really well to cancel out a lot of the redness and kind of purpleness on the surface of my skin. G12 is a good light shade, but it's very, very peachy pink. If it were a little bit more neutral and muted, that would be ideal for me. As it is, it does sort of have the ability to adapt a little bit to the skin. I found when I applied it on half of my face today, the overall coloring blended pretty well, but I did have a bit of that green color corrector mixed into the tint underneath, so that might have helped it out too. So overall, I think this is an excellent product, gives really nice coverage, gives a beautiful, beautiful finish on the skin. Before I washed it off today, I was really admiring how it looked. My skin just looked like skin, but super healthy and really nicely moisturized and evened out. So I think that's a great one if you can find your shade. And I really hope that with this introduction of Glossier into Sephora, that may allow them to invest into expanding their shade range because I know they could use more shades in the very fair range and looking at the shade range, they could definitely expand in the deeper range and probably in the mids as well. Not only with the depths, but with their undertones, they could really go a long way to improving that. Okay, the Glassy High Shine Lip Gloss, I don't know anything about that, so I can't really share any opinions there. They have a clear one, they have a holographic, which has an opalescent shimmer, and then there is a sheer red shade as well. They also have the Generation G Sheer Matte Lipstick. So again, I haven't tried this and I really don't have anything to say about it. Looking at the shade range, they look to all be kind of deeper colors, but they are described as sheer. So they're probably the type of thing that you could build up. Um, you could get a sheer layer and not have it looking too dark or build it up to get a little bit more impact from it. The Glossier Boy Brow, this is one of their most famous and most popular products, and I have used this. I think I had the shade Blonde, and I liked it, but I didn't find it to be anything exceptional. It was a good brow gel. I liked that the little spoolie was very small, so that allowed you to get some precision when using this, but I didn't find it to be anything special compared to other brow gels that I've tried and I actually prefer the Kosas brow gel to that one because I think it's a little bit quicker and easier to use. I also found that the Glossier one dried out fairly quickly, so that was a downside for that one, but it was okay. They also have the U perfume in solid form. I haven't tried that, but I know I wouldn't like the scent of it. The Monochrome's Essential Eyeshadow Trio Palette. Now I bought three of these when they were originally released and I have a video on them so I'm going to link that so you can actually see me 
using the shades that I got and demoing the product and sharing my like full complete thoughts on them. I think these are okay, but nothing too exciting and it could just be the shades that I chose aren't as useful to me, but I haven't really used these very much since I got them. I got the yellow shade, which doesn't appear to be on Sephora. I also got the prairie shade, which is the olive green, which I have here. I actually gave my yellow one away, so I can't show that to you anyways. That's the olive green prairie and then I also have the peachy shade which I'm not seeing on Sephora either this one right here which is called bluff so I actually used this in my look today it's the lighter shade that I have on my lid and inner corner and dragged onto the uh, lower lash line there but it appears that this is not going to be available at Sephora but definitely check out that dedicated video that I did if you want to know more about these and if you want to see me actually applying the prairie shade I think these are good I like the formulas and I like the concept so the idea with these monochrome palettes is that you have three of essentially the same shade in different finishes so you have a matte you have a satin and you have a more kind of sparkly shimmery shade so i love that concept i just find that i don't go to these very often probably because i have so much other makeup if i didn't have a ton of eyeshadow i could see these being an everyday type of palette particularly in some of the more neutral tones but the one downside i did find with these is the shimmery shades tend to give me quite a lot of fallout and that happened today as well so that's just something to be aware of if you like to do your face makeup before your eyes all the time and follow bothers you that might be an issue for you that was really the only issue i came across with these though next is the solar paint luminous gel cream bronzer this i loved i had the shade flare which was the lightest shade a light neutral bronze with gold pearl i just found this such a joy to use it was really easy to work with and I loved the application method. It was a little bit different from a lot of other bronzers that I've seen, really. I haven't seen any other bronzers with this type of component and the doe foot applicator. And I just, I loved the color. I found it really easy to work with. I thought it made the skin look really healthy. This didn't survive my great declutter of 2022 when I got rid of every piece of makeup that I had with hyaluronic acid in it. So I actually passed this on to a family member, but this is one that I was really sad to see go and one that I would definitely still be using and enjoying if it didn't have that ingredient um, that doesn't agree with my skin. But I think that's a beautiful product and definitely worth looking at in my opinion. Next up is the Future Do Facial Oil Serum Hybrid. This is another quite popular product from the brand and I actually have this as well. I don't know if you can see, but I went through about half of it. This also has hyaluronic acid in it. If you don't know hyaluronic acid, I discovered, usually it breaks me out. There are some products that are exceptions, but for the most part, it uh, really doesn't agree with my skin. And so that's why I got rid of or passed on everything that I had with it in it. But this was okay. Again, I wasn't blown away by this product. I used it a lot but I never got the level of dewiness and kind of moisturization that I wanted or expected from this one. So this is one I like the idea of it more than the actual reality I find. That's what it looks like. This is one that I had uh, passed on to my mom, so I just borrowed it for this video. It looks like it has a tint, but once it's blended out, you don't really have to worry about that. So I think even for the fairest skin, this is fine does have a smell to it. I don't know if it's added fragrance, but it has kind of like an herbal spa-like type of smell, which kind of just smells like, I think, probably the ingredients that are used in this. So on my hand, it does give a good sheen, but I find it doesn't last. So once I've applied makeup over top of it and it's had a moment to sink into the skin, I just don't really get much from this in terms of the, that shiny, dewy finish. So again, I don't hate it, but I just am not sure that it's worth it. I much prefer the Merit Great Skin Serum if you want something like that, that's gonna give you a really beautiful, dewy, plump skin to start out your makeup with. I think the Merit product is a lot better. I'm actually wearing that today, and I just always am super impressed by that product, and it really delivers on what I think the Glossier Future Do doesn't quite deliver for me.
And then there's the Halo Scope, which is a balm highlighter. I've never tried that. I don't have anything really to say about that. The Lash Slick Lift and Lengthening Mascara, that I have tried. They now have a black and a brown. I've tried, I think, only the black shade, and it was pretty good, actually. It gave me more impact than I expected, but it was another one like the brow gel that I found dried up quite quickly, and so I might not repurchase it for that reason because I felt like I didn't get as much life out of it as I wanted to. Next is the Lidstar Long Wearing Shimmer Cream Eyeshadow. I've never tried that. I don't know anything about it. The Sky Wash is like a matte version of that, I guess, kind of like a liquid eyeshadow that is matte. Again, I haven't tried it, so I don't know. And then they have a number of skincare items as well, which I'm not really going to go through except for one because I haven't tried any of them except for one. I don't know anything about them. Oh, before I get into that, I'm seeing one other makeup item before I get to that skincare item, the Brow Flick Micro Fine Detailing Eyebrow Pen. I had that as well. I wasn't very impressed by that. I'm generally not a huge fan of eyebrow pens, so that's probably part of the problem. But I just found this as well dried out so, so quickly that it really wasn't worth it. I had the blonde shade though, so that could have been an issue as well. Although I do tend to often prefer to go for like blonde or lighter eyebrow shades. Uh, this one just wasn't really working for me. It may have just been too light for me as well. Now the skincare product that I have tried and loved is the After Balm Moisture Barrier Recovery Cream. I've gone through only one of these and it was quite recently. I bought it, I think from their Black Friday sale and used it up quite quickly. So that was one slight downside is that how quickly I went through it, but I do tend to go through moisturizers very quickly, especially in the winter time because my skin is extremely dry. It was around the time that I bought this that I was really considering and realizing how dry my skin was and that my barrier really needed to be repaired to try and help that dryness issue. And I found that this was really helpful in getting that moisture back and repairing my skin barrier. On a daily basis, I just use the Nivea, the very thick Nivea cream, and I find that works very well. It's very affordable. Um, and so I can kind of use as much as I want without feeling like I'm wasting my money. And it does a really good job of helping to support and heal the barrier and lock the moisture in as well. But the Glossier After Balm, I have to say, does an even better job than the Nivea cream because it just seems to form an even stronger physical barrier on the skin. So this is another product like the Glossier Lip Balm that I can put it on at night and when I wake up, I can still feel that moisture is on my skin and that there's still that kind of slight physical barrier from it. So I think the After Balm is really an excellent product and it may be something that I repurchase now that it's going to be available at Sephora because when you order from the Glossier website to Canada, you have to pay duties and all of that, which is gonna be great to be able to avoid that. The one downside I found is that it would often pill. So I ended up not wearing it under makeup very much because it did have that tendency to pill. So then I just started reserving it as a nighttime moisturizer and barrier cream. And for me, that was the best purpose for this. So those are all the thoughts I could share about Glossier as it's coming to Sephora. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I would also love to hear if you have any favorites or fails from Glossier. Let me know about that in the comments as well. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.